Alright yo, so 49ers absolutely squashed the Vikings at home. This was a completely unexpected way of the way going, uh, of the game going. Everybody including myself expected that it was going to be, you know, a nice competitive game. Got two very similarly built teams going up against each other here um, in the 49ers and the Vikings. Both of them have really good defenses. Throughout the season, the 49ers defense, I believe, was ranked better statistically than the Vikings. But the Vikings defense, especially after uh, the way they ended their season and especially the way they played against the Saints last week, um, had people believing that maybe they were making a comeback to their 20, 2017 form, that record-breaking Minnesota Vikings defense back then. But they came up this game and they turned up short. I mean, no matter which way you look at it, giving up 2017, uh, 27 points to a team is not the performance of a good defense. In fact, it's the performance of very average defense, and that's what they looked like this game. And it's not as though the 49ers completely murdered them on offense. Jimmy G, he only had completed 11 passes for 131 yards, one touchdown, one interception. But what the 49ers did, which is what the Vikings failed to do, once again, because of how similar these teams are, is that the 49ers pounded the rock and they ran the ball all day all over that Vikings defense. And I was waiting for the Vikings to run the ball in a similar fashion or to get Dalvin Cook or uh, Alexander Madison going, but Cook finished with 18 yards and Madison finished with three yards. A total of 21 rushing yards for the Minnesota Vikings. You're not gonna win any game that way, no matter who you are. Versus the 49ers having uh, over 160 yards rushing. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the way you, you win a football game, running the ball and defense. And before I get into what, what, what I was impressed with, with this 49ers team, I still think that they could get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna face either the Packers or the Seahawks next week. And really on the NFC side of things, we're left with three teams that are, uh, in my opinion, a bit of like soft playoff teams. By record, you know, by record alone, they're some of the best left, but the 49ers, Jimmy G still has not proven that he's a clutch, you know, quarterback, a quarterback that could get it done in the biggest lights and the biggest games yet. His defense is what completely won this game here, don't get it wrong. The 49ers defense is what won this game, not their offense, not Jimmy G. Uh, the Packers, you guys know if you saw my live stream yesterday, you guys know how I feel about them. The Packers offense is very suspect, they have a good defense, but then is their offense is the same thing. What might be the downfall of them and the Seahawks truly just overachieved this year. But let me get into what I was impressed with. The one guy that won this game for the 49ers, I guess I should say the one group, was the defensive line. And I have Nick Bosa up there in the background because he came up with, I think, two sacks. Uh, Bosa had two sacks, but then about four other people on the team also had a sack. So yeah, Bosa had two. You got uh, Eric Armstead with one, DeForest Buckner with one, Anthony Zettel with one, and D Ford with one. This entire 49ers defensive line was and their linebackers were just swarming at the quarterback at Kirk Cousins all day. Almost every snap you saw, the Vikings offensive line was being pushed back by the power and the quickness of the 49ers defense. And they were just overwhelming them and suffocating them throughout the game. And that's why they couldn't get the, the run game going. That's why Kirk Cousins looked like uh, the Kirk Cousins we expected to see last week. Not the good one that uh, slayed the dragon in, in New Orleans. But this defense really stifled them. And it wasn't just the uh, defensive line. The linebackers, like I said, they were all over the place. They were in coverage. Nick Bosa himself was in coverage one time, knocked down a pass. And the secondary was doing their job. Richard Sherman came up, old man Sherman, came up with a pick. And uh, there, was good, there was good coverage all day. It did, all in all, the 49ers just outplayed the Vikings when it came to, I guess you could say, their offense, the Vikings offense versus the 49ers defense. And also the Vikings, they just gave up going into like... I want to say halfway through the third quarter when it was around 20 to uh, yeah when it was around like 20 to 10 or 20 to 7, you could see it in the in the Vikings players' eyes. You could see it in Stephon Diggs's uh, eyes, the way uh, they were carrying themselves. They they like the air was knocked out of them. You could see they sort of just gave up, and that brings the interesting questions on the Vikings side of things. Stephon Diggs, one of their main receivers, has been unhappy all season and all throughout the postseason, is he gonna leave the Minnesota Vikings? Is he gonna go somewhere else? Is he gonna find a new team? The same could be said for a Adam Thielen. You could even say that for their uh, defensive players, guys like uh, Daniil Hunter, Anthony Barr, Xavier Rhodes, Everson Griffin, Andrew Sandejo, all these guys that played their hearts out. 
and that really got abused today because their offense couldn't get the job done. But I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in the uh, NFC Championship game. I, my dream matchup would now be 49ers versus Seahawks, the NFC West matchup. See if the Seahawks could overcome the tower that is the 49ers. But as of right now, it looks like this is the team that's going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Let me know what you guys think down below. Like, share, subscribe. I'm out. You're... Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. You're...